okay so in the last video you have got an idea about the by axial stress okay you have seen that in case of pressure ratios any element of that vessels are subjected to by axial stress okay and in the last video we have also discussed how to find that longitudinal stress or the hope stress okay and in this video i will further analyze this by axial stress system okay so what is that mean actually that means let's say this is a by axial uh, stress system and here if i ask you to find out the stresses in this plane that means what are the stresses or what is the normal stress as well as what is the shear stress here like this okay so after watching this video you will be able to analyze this two dimensional stress system okay so let's start without wasting any further time so let consider we have a 2d stress system like this okay and here uh, this is let's say this is the x axis and this is the y axis okay so along x axis the stress is denoted by let's say this is your uh, sigma x okay so all the stress along this x axis is sigma x and all the stress along this y axis is denoted by let's say this is sigma y okay this is sigma y not only that we will also assume that sigma x sigma x is always algebraically greater than sigma y okay this is always algebraically greater than so that means if you have two tensile stresses in that case sigma x is larger one if you have two compressive stresses sigma x is the uh, smaller one okay or you can say in that case uh, if minus 2 mpa and minus 4 mpa okay so sigma x is minus 2 mpa and of course if you have one compressive stress and one is tensile stress in that case sigma x is tensile one let's say 4 mpa and sigma y is the uh, compressive one let's say minus 5 mpa okay so this is the assumption and based on this assumption we will discuss so now what we have to do define any plane okay so let's say we are taking a plane okay like this this is the plane we are considering and the normal to this plane let uh, denote that by your axis n okay so this is the n axis okay not x not y rather it is n and this n axis is actually making angle phi with axis x this is phi okay so definitely this angle is also going to be measured as phi any doubt no okay so uh, to analyze all the stresses in this plane what we will do we will simply take the free body diagram of this plane of this part okay so just cut it out and consider the left one so it looks something like this okay this is the left face this is the bottom face and our plane is this one this is our plane and this angle is phi okay and the resultant stress along x axis let's say this is sigma x time the face area let's consider the face area in left side is let's say this is uh, your d a x and also the area in this 
space is let us say this is D A Y and the area of the plane we are considering this one let us say this is D A N ok and here so total stress resultant stress or resultant force is coming as sigma x time d a x ok what about along the bottom face in this bottom face the resultant force is acting as sigma y times d a y ok and let us say along this normal direction this is the normal direction the stress is sigma n ok and the area is d a n and also the shear stress that is acting uh, let us say like this this is the resultant shear stress let us say this is tau and this is d a n again ok. So, as for equilibrium what we can say that for this whole system the summation of a force along let us say this normal direction ok we are considering along this normal direction. So, all the forces along this normal direction must be equate with 0 not only that all the forces ok all the forces along this let us say uh, shear force direction in this direction this is also going to be 0. So, first consider this one left one. So, the normal component that is sigma n sorry let me use the red color. So, the force along this n axis is sigma n times d a n and it is equate with all the component towards n. So, first consider the left one ok. So, left one in the left one this is phi. So, if we consider a parallel line like this this is also phi this is also phi. So, this one is actually 90 minus phi. So, any component of this force along this line is going to be actually sigma x time d a x of cos 90 minus phi means sin phi ok and also if you take a component like this ok this is actually sigma x time d a x time sin of 90 minus phi that means actually cos phi agree again uh, consider this one now. So, this is phi this plane and this plane are parallel. So, this is phi. So, this component is actually cos component of this one this is cos component cos phi and this one is actually sin component of this force ok. So, now in the right side of this equation put each of these forces first one in this direction the component is this one. So, this is sigma x time d a x or the area of this face and this is the cos component of this face that is d a n times cos phi into cos phi clear. If you cannot understand please replay this video so that you can clear your concept more positively ok. 
plus come to this one okay this is the forces in this normal direction and it is coming as sigma y day again day or this phase is nothing but the sine component of this phase agree so dan times sine phi into the sine okay so we are getting sigma n is coming as sigma x sorry let me use some different color for better understanding uh, sigma x time cos square phi plus sigma y times sin square phi okay you can also rewrite this equation as uh, sigma x plus uh, this is simply trigonometry okay so you can also rewrite this equation as sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos 2 phi okay this is completely trigonometrical application so this is the first trace we have already identified now what about this shear trace tau well again you can simply in this equation put uh, tau d a n in one side that is equal with again all the component in this direction so the first one is this one this is d x d a y sin phi plus this one okay this is that is cos component of sigma y d a y times cos phi okay now let me clean the bottom one okay so here if we rewrite this one again tau is coming as sigma x times well again d a y is nothing but d a n times what is that cos component okay this one is cos component of this one cos phi and again this one is d a n times sine component okay so tau is coming as sigma x okay and times sin phi cos phi okay plus sigma y times sin phi and cos phi again if you can apply the trigonometry in that case tau can be derived as your uh, half times sigma x plus sigma y okay and this is coming as cos sorry sine to phi okay i have also forgetting day by day the trigonometrical formulas so this is sine to phi okay so this is the equation for finding the shear stress this one in this plane and this is the equation for finding the normal stress in this plane okay so you have got both the formulas now we have completed our first task that is to find out all the normal stress as well as the shear stress in this plane that is uh, at an angle of phi with this vertical face or you can say the normal of this plane is making an angle of phi with this horizontal axis x okay now let's consider another plane that is uh, at an angle of phi plus 90 degree that means till here this is phi 
now again we are moving to again plus 90 degree okay so this is actually 5 plus 90 degree and here of course now the plane becomes like this okay because the normal is making 5 plus 90 degree so plane is actually this one and the normal is again let me use the same red color so here now normal become this one okay and now denote this normal as n dashed because previously this was n and now this is n dashed so again the same problem we have to find out the normal stress that is acting along this n dashed and let den uh, denote that as your sigma n dashed and the shear stress okay that is acting here now okay in this plane like this okay and let's denote that one by tau n dashed okay so how to find them simply the same formula but here the phi is equals with phi dashed actually phi dashed is nothing but phi plus 90 degree that's all so again put simply one by one first one sigma n dashed sigma n dashed actually now becoming sigma x cos square phi or cos square 90 plus phi plus sigma y sin square 90 plus phi you know cos 90 plus phi is equal to sin phi and sin 90 plus phi is equal to minus cos phi okay so this is coming as sigma x sin square phi plus sigma y cos square phi so sigma n dash is derived okay now it's time for tau n dash so tau n dash this is half times sigma x plus sigma y times sin 2 phi or you can say sin 180 degree plus 2 phi that gives you minus half times sigma x plus sigma y sin 2 phi again it is derived now if you can recall that during the discussion of your unilateral stress system the same thing we have done that is first we have considered a plane like this then we have considered a plane like this at a degree of uh, 90 degree difference okay and these two planes are known as complementary and also the stresses in these two plane are known as complementary stresses so same thing applicable here also okay and here the stresses in this plane okay are known as complementary stresses of the stress in this plane okay and in this case you have seen that the total stress okay in these two complementary stress a plane is same sorry constant and same is valid here if you simply uh, put the sum of sigma n and sigma n dashed you will get that it is constant that is sigma x plus sigma y it is constant okay and also here you have seen that uh, shear stress in complementary planes are same but they are uh, opposite in nature the same is also valid here here you can see the tau is equals with tau in dashed but there is a minus sign okay so that's all for today's session